Hello, hello. Thanks for stopping by. This is a new PC build that I put together, and I thought I would share it before I closed the case up entirely. I built this one from a PC case that I purchased from MyRetroComputer.com. Now, this is a new PC build from a housing designed to look like the Commodore 64, which basically means the keyboard is included in the housing. This case was actually first manufactured 10 years back by a company called Commodore USA. They basically tried to start the Commodore brand again, and they had a run of these cases for at least a year or two. I had one at one point, and it was working great, but then I tried to upgrade it, and I accidentally fried something on the keyboard. I was messing with the hookups. It was my fault. Unfortunately, I eventually tossed the case, because I couldn't get replacement parts at that point. The founder of the Commodore USA Revival, I believe he passed away, and as a result, the company closed again. Then, I don't know, about three months back, I found MyRetroComputer.com. It's a UK-based company that, I guess they bought the molds that were used by Commodore USA ten years ago, and they started printing the cases again. I almost lost my mind when I saw this, and I actually bought two systems. I bought this shell, and then I bought another model that was complete. I'll feature that on a different video. Honestly, I can admit, I went a little nuts on hardware over the past two months. I actually also bought a bonafide Commodore 64. Once again, that'll be a different video. So personally, I love computers, and I love building custom machines. The big hunt with something like this is you figuring out exactly what you want to do with the case. What type of internals do you want? What kind of an operating system? All that stuff. I love it. Now, in the current market that we're in, I found that it's become really difficult to source certain parts for this. I know people are having problems getting the new Xbox or the new PlayStation. Well, that's all across the industry. It was tough to find things. The biggest problem I had with this particular build was to find the right motherboard. This is a mini ITX case, and there's very little room for a CPU heatsink here. With the keyboard built into the case, heat could be an issue, so the best way around it is to make sure you build the machine with this in mind. I wasn't designing this machine for high-end power, I've got computers for that already. I was building this one more for function. Yes, it's going to be able to play video games, but not the modern high-end ones. Eventually, I did find the perfect motherboard, and then I ordered it. It was refurbished from a third party selling through Amazon, but since Amazon has a really good return policy, I bought it. Then the company sent me the wrong motherboard. Great. So at this point, I'd already ordered all the other parts, and all those parts were based off of the original motherboard specs, so it kind of became a hassle. I had to do a lot of searching, but I did manage to find a replacement motherboard. It was a different build than I wanted, so it wasn't my first choice. But the current market is really tough to source parts for right now, so it'll have to do. The big deal with this type of motherboard, the one that I was looking for, is that I was hunting for an integrated unit. I wanted it with an embedded CPU, which means it's going to have a low power draw and also a low heat output and no crazy need for a CPU heatsink or fancy fans or any of that stuff. I also wanted a unit that would take an external power supply because there's no room inside the case for a power brick. Eventually I found a particular internal power plug that actually plugs into the motherboard and it extends to the side of the case and you plug a cable in there. It works just right. I also bought a low-power laptop power supply to meet the board demands, and knowing that the power supply was going to be coming out of the right side of the machine, I also found an adapter for the end of the power supply to make it so it's a 90-degree attachment to the side. This way the cord doesn't stretch right to the side of the machine, it stretches out backwards. I also put in a decent set of RAM. I mean, I'm starting with 16 gigabytes, and I also got a solid-state drive to make sure the CPU has every opportunity to be efficient. The motherboard I ended up with didn't actually have an integrated wireless card either, and that's something I really wanted. Lucky for me, the board had a mini PCIe Express internal port, and I've never used this particular port before, but as it turns out, wireless cards are like 10 bucks, and I just plugged it in, screwed it down, and it worked. Easy. I also managed to find an internal wireless antenna for like another 6 or 7 bucks. It's really easy to plug in and use and help extend the distance for the wireless, if you get the right plug on the antenna. The first one I ordered had the wrong adapter at the back of it. 
but it works great now. For me, I also need a DVD drive. That's a big deal for me. I have too many DVDs kicking around to not use this. So I popped in a DVD drive to match up with the side opening of the machine. If you don't want to drive, they do ship this with a panel cover that looks like a DVD drive, but is really just a little chassis where you can put in an internal drive inside the machine. It's clever enough. When it comes to an operating system, I went with Ubuntu Linux. I'm a huge fan of Windows, of course, but for a build like this, I really didn't want to fork out another hundred bucks or so for a new operating system. Plus, there are plenty of games you can play through Linux one way or the other, and I have a Steam account. There are plenty of Linux versions of Steam games. Still, gaming is not going to be the focus for this particular machine. I'm kind of thinking of this one as a really advanced DVD player. MyRetroComputer.com is actually planning on running a Kickstarter in a month or so to print other cases in different colors. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be scooping at least one during that campaign. Knowing that the company already has sales in an existing product that I have my hands on, it really makes it easy to trust a campaign like that. And I'm also looking forward to trying to build another machine down the road. Assuming I can find the right parts, of course. So this one looks great, of course. I mean, I love these clicky keys for the keyboard. It feels really great to use. The big question now, I think, is how well the system runs. Well, it definitely runs, absolutely. It's a fully running Linux machine with a really clever appearance. It's exactly what I was looking for. Well, that's all I have today on this particular video. Thanks for stopping by to take a look. If you like this type of content, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I hope to catch you on another video.